What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. It's the Cushman here. Today we're going to be talking about can of butter. So what is can of butter? Can of butter for the uninitiated is when you combine your THC product with butter uh, to make a infused THC butter and then you can cook with it, whatever you want to do. Uh, people make butters, oils, all, all sorts of different things. Uh, my preference is butter. You can use it in a lot of different baking applications. And it seems to come out pretty good for me. So I've done this before um, using this specific method and it turned out great. Actually, it turned out so great that it was probably the, the most blast that I've ever been off of an edible. So I figured I would share this experience with you guys, tell you how to uh, cook some of your own can of butter and we'll be on our way. So um, let's see, what do you need to make can of butter? So using this method, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're going to be using the crock pot method, which is what I would recommend if you have some time and a uh, space to be able to do it. Uh, it's going to make your house smell, but that's just kind of what goes with the process of making can of butter, no matter which way you uh, mash it. So moving past that, we're going to start with what do you need? is some trim so this is all of the trim from our latest harvest uh, I put it back in the tent I've been drying it out for the last few days well I say few days it's been about 10 days now that this has been drying in the tent I just keep going in there every day flipping it you can hear that little crunch in there nice crunchy dried out trim um, I've cooked with wet trim before it doesn't seem to make a difference people say it does but I didn't dry it before I just took it straight from the freezer after uh, trimming it wet and, and it worked just as good so do with that information what you will but uh, the trim to butter ratio that people recommend is four ounces of dry trim to one pound of butter so we have two pounds of butter here this is eight ounces of dry trim so that should be the perfect amount for what we need that's actually Actually, uh, everything that came off of our harvest so it was, it was the exact right amount it was perfect so yeah using that ratio you can deduce that you need some trim but you also need some butter so uh, use some all unsalted butter uh, most people who, who do any sort of cooking would recommend that you use unsalted butter otherwise you're introducing more salt than necessary into your products and then it makes it a little bit more versatile for cooking different things that maybe you wouldn't want to put salt in. And there's less impurities in unsalted butter. So some people will uh, cook this butter down on the stove, remove all the fat from it, but I don't really go through all that. This is going to be a simple, easy way to make butter, like I said. So we're not going to do that today. Works out just fine. Uh, moving past that, you're going to need some cheesecloth. So after you mix your butter and your trim together, cook it all down, it's going to make a nasty green mush and you're gonna have to strain it through a cheesecloth into a pot. Now I guess you don't have to use a cheesecloth. I've seen people use uh, coffee filters or other sorts of cloth types of filters, but I recommend just getting a cheesecloth. You can find them at your grocery store. This, this whole package here, three feet by 10 feet, was only like two or three bucks. So it's not like you're gonna be out of pocket for buying some cheesecloth. And speaking of straining, you're gonna need a strainer, so make sure you got one of those on hand, otherwise your life's gonna be pretty messy. And then last but not least, you're gonna need the crock pot. So this is my crock pot. I cook many different things in here. I've cooked butter in here before, cook roasts, all sorts of chilies, and this thing really gets its use. So uh, it's, it's not just for using butter. If you clean it out good enough, you can get all that smell out afterwards and then use it for whatever you want to do. You don't have to dedicate one single crock pot to uh, making butter. Just make sure you clean it pretty good afterwards. So, all right, now that we've got the uh, necessary items out of the way, there is a process that we have to follow. So there's a process for decarbing weed. What is decarbing weed? Decarbing weed is putting it in the oven at 225 for about 40 to 60 minutes. And what that does is it converts the, so it converts the TA into something that can be consumed by humans and processed by our digestive systems uh, obviously if you just go into your um, go into your flower room and start picking off buds and eating them you're not going to get high from them so there's a process you have to follow uh, there's some type of chemical reaction that goes on and it turns it into a form that can be consu consumed by humans so don't question it just do it 225 40 to 60 minutes uh, I'm probably gonna do 40 minutes because of the method that we're using um, 
It's gonna be cooking low and slow over a long period of time. Some people skip the decarb process altogether when using this method, but then there's others who say it's controversial, you shouldn't do that because it doesn't cook at a high enough temperature and blah, 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 blah. So I'm just gonna do it to uh, kind of fend off all the negative comments out there. But anyways, let's stick this in the oven. Whoop. All right, so we've got our trim in the oven here. Uh, obviously, you'd like to put it on the middle rack, but I had a little bit too much to just put it all on one rack, so I kind of staggered them a little bit, get some uh, airflow moving throughout, and it should be perfectly fine. I mean, we're not cooking it for too long anyway, so let's put 40 minutes on the clock here. Come on. All right, 40 minutes on the clock starting now, and we'll be back. All right, and our 40 minutes is up, so let's go ahead and take these things out of here. All right, look at all that. Looking good, looking good. All right, so now our next step here is gonna be to add all of our butter to the crock pot. So let's take our butter, and one at a time, we're just gonna add them all in there. It's a little bit harder than expected, so, um, Bam! And like magic, we've got all of our butters in there. Uh, we've got it on low right now. We're gonna try and melt this down a little bit, and then we're gonna add our water and our trim. All right, so now that our butter's mixed, it's time to add the water. So why do we use the water? The water keeps this at a steady boiling point. So if you put water in it, it's not gonna go over 212 degrees. So it's a little uh, cheap and easy way to make sure that uh, you don't boil all the good stuff out of your product. So I was reading online and they say And this is going to be really hard to do with one hand. Uh, I should have grabbed the tripod or something. But what we're going to do is we're just going to dump all of our trim in there and see what it looks like. So after you dump some in there, you're going to make sure to give it a nice little stir. Get everything nice and mixed up in there. And then as, as you'll notice, it all shrinks down. Because I mean, these are like leaf particles. They, they look really big because they were all fluffed up from drying them out and whatnot. But they end up breaking down small like some spinach, you know? So let's add the rest of it. And that, my friends, is a full crock pot of trim. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be that much. Uh, let's mix this up and see what it looks like. All right, and here we are, all mixed up. Didn't even have to add any more water. It actually turned out pretty good. So uh, I think this is the most trim I've ever put into a butter batch. So we, we'll see how it turns out, but I fo followed someone's ratio online. It sounded right. So we're gonna try it out. But this really is like a set it and forget it method. So I'm gonna pop this on for eight hours. I'll come in here a couple times and stir it up throughout the cooking process. But as far as doing anything else, that's about as good as it's going to get right here, fellas, so. Alright, so just a little halfway point update. We're four hours in, and this is how the, uh, the water helps your butter. So we are four hours in, and our thermometer sitting in the top here shows that we are at 192 degrees, so. The boiling point of butter is much higher than water, so when you add the water, it helps to stabilize the, uh, the temperature inside of the mixture so that you're not boiling over, otherwise your butter would be a lot more hot than if you didn't mix it with the water. So 192 degrees, that's uh, at the top of the, uh, the mixture. It's probably a little bit hotter towards the bottom, but just for a proof of concept that it works, uh, this is the little temperature gauge. Checking the temperature, I'm not gonna leave it in there because uh, I don't wanna block this exhaust hole, but just to check it every once in a while, make sure everything's going good. So we'll take a look here. And this stuff is sizzling. Look at this sludge right here. That buttery goodness. This is gonna be some dank butter, my friends. Dank butter. Starting to look like spinach a little bit over here after we've cooked it down a little bit. But I dig it, so this smell is stinking up my whole house right now. But all right, I just wanted to show you guys a little halfway point update before we uh, hit the finish line. I'll check back with you in a little bit. All right, and here we are at the end of the road after our eight hours of cooking, and this is what we got. See what I'm talking about, a spinach consistency? That stuff is nice and mushy. Oh, that's some thick stuff right there, my friends. 
All right, so our next step here is gonna be to strain all of this plant matter in this big pot of mush over here. We're gonna strain it through our cheesecloth and strainer into another pot. So you wanna make sure that your end pot is big enough to uh, handle all the material. Obviously, you're not gonna be keeping the plant material, but you are gonna be keeping the butter and the water. So we used 48 ounces of water and we used 32 ounces of butter. And uh, I figured that this pot would be big enough. It's a nice, I don't know, I'd probably say about three quarts. Oh yeah, and you're probably gonna want some sort of gloves that you can handle it with. This stuff's gonna be really hot, so anything that you can use. Uh, I've seen people use like the yellow dish gloves and whatnot, so make sure you keep that in mind before you start dabbling into this. You don't wanna burn yourself, this stuff's like 200 degrees, so. All right, let's do it. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start straining through our cheesecloth. Take it nice and slow. I say a little bit at a time and then I just go balls to the wall with it. So what you're gonna wanna do, you can see that there's uh, some drips coming out the bottom. And that's all butter and water pouring out. So you're gonna wanna squeeze down as much as you can on this. Uh, you don't wanna squeeze too hard because then you're gonna be pushing your plant matter through the screen, so you don't want that. But you do wanna try and squeeze out as much butter as possible. Usually I'll just take the cheesecloth uh, I'll pull it all out of here and then squeeze it. Maybe we'll do that right now. So we've got our whole cloth full of goodies over here and we'll just give it a nice little squeeze. Squeeze all them juices out, all that butter. Make sure we're not losing any in the process. Look at all that we would have left behind. Now once you get to the end where it's not really pulling anything out anymore, don't go too overboard squeezing it and squeeze out your plant matter. So we're just gonna take this and we're gonna throw it in the garbage and dispose of it. Uh, I don't know any use for it. I don't know, maybe someone can make some teas with it or something, but to me, this is trash, so it's going in the garbage. All right, so we gave our strainer a nice little rinse there, make sure all that excess plant material is gone. Now we're just gonna go through one more time, make sure all the uh, plant matter scooped up. Looks like we're already getting a little bit of it that we dropped in there. Got a little bit sloppy when we're making it, but it was not a big deal. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We did get a little bit of excess plant material into our mix, so what you can do is make sure you clean out your original pot that you cooked in, the crock pot. Make sure there's, there's no plant material left in there, and then we're just gonna filter this back through here, through the strainer. Now we're just gonna rinse this out one more time. And then we're gonna go back and get our crock pot and then just filter it one more time back into our finishing container. And it looks like we caught just a little bit more on that last filter. So I think we're good. All right, so what you're left with is a little pizza brick over here. Um, what I usually do is I'll take a knife and I'll go across the top and try and scrape off all that little slime layer. So there's gonna be a layer of slime that kind of like develop between the water and the butter. And I just try and take that off. Some people will save it, but it makes a weird consistency when you're baking with it. So I find it better to just kind of try and take it off. But at this point, your butter is totally done. So uh, at this point, you can just take it and break it down, put it in a Tupperware container, stick it in the fridge or your freezer. Uh, I know some people like to remelt it down. If you have like a butter tray or something, you can pour it out into, make your own little perfect sticks of butter. Uh, you could do that as well. Obviously, make sure you don't boil it down and cook the THC out, but that's another option for you. If you're a perfectionist, you want this stuff to look great in your freezer. But yeah, I'm super excited with how this turned out. Like I said, this is the most trim I have ever put into a batch of edibles. So I will, uh, maybe I'll make an update and let you guys know how this went. If I survive it, that is. <laughs> but yeah, that is a how-to on how to make can of butter. So 
So if you're not going to melt it down into butter sticks uh, and you're just going to stick it in the fridge like this, you're probably thinking, well, how am I going to measure this into serving sizes for an appropriate dish? Like if it calls for two sticks of butter, one stick of butter, half stick of butter. Uh, I use a kitchen scale. So I'll take the kitchen scale. Um, obviously, a stick of butter is four ounces. Four sticks of butter is 16 ounces and a pound. So I'll just do a one-to-one. -one. I'll, I'll grab four ounces of this butter, weigh it out, and then I'll use that as a stick of butter. And that's how I cook with cannabis so but that's it guys so thank you for stopping in make sure you hit that like button on the way out hit that subscribe button if you're not already stay updated with all of our latest videos uh, i hope you guys have a great time making your very own can of butter let me know what you're making with it but that's it so i will catch you guys next time peace out